back to part two of the Snail Runner series. As promised in the last video, this segment will be all about the cooking gear I travel with in my third gen Forerunner snail shell. If you clicked on this because you're looking to dial in a final component for your kitchen setup, and you don't want to watch the entire inventory being reviewed, you can just use the timecode links in the description below to skip ahead. When I first started planning for making meals on the road, my goal was to put together a kitchen setup that was both affordable, yet not primitive. I'm someone who uses car camping as an excuse to get extravagant and cook what you might call a poor man's fancy feast. Or a rich man's fancy feast. Anyway, I guess it goes without saying that different people have vastly different tastes and needs when it comes to cooking on the road. So today, for part two, we're doing something a little different. I'm currently here in Providence, Rhode Island at my friend's warehouse. We're filming in Rachel's studio, where she and I have set out to evaluate our respective kitchen items in a head-to-head -head comparison. Now, Rachel's studio is very big. Like, practice wheelies inside during the winter big. So naturally, we decided we were going to put all our items through lots of unnecessary testing. Mainly, however, we're going to be talking about all the nitty-gritty details, from functionality to durability to cost, and let you decide which of our gear choices is right for you. So buckle up and get ready for the first episode of The Price is Reasonable! In this episode, we have Kendall, a low-budget glamper, going head-to-head -head with Rachel, a minimalist desert camper who's not afraid to buy a $300 cooler. The person with the least expensive setup overall will be our winner. But whose gear will go the distance? You decide. Here's my camp stove. It's a two burner made by Sears. I bought this used, well, never used, pre owned on eBay for about $60. And I sought out this stove in particular because it comes with a flexible hose. I like having this flexible hose because it means that the fuel canister isn't gonna be in a fixed position. I have a little more um, freedom as to where I can put it while I'm cooking. And, right, uh, I like a two burner stove because you can boil water and cook something else at the same time. It comes with this metal grate that can be easily removed so you can clean this surface. I'm not sure if this is original to the stove or someone added this, but it has these little metal bars that let you put a smaller pot in that area. This stove has pretty good control over how much fuel you're running through it. It's got decent simmer, but compared to other two burners I've used, it definitely has a little more control than most. I don't know anything about its fuel efficiency because it was made before anybody gave a shit about that. But otherwise it works really well. You know, compacts down like any other two burner stove. Comes with a latch, keeps it shut, built in handle. And it comes in this beautiful color. What's not to like? This is my two burner camp stove. It is a camp chef. I have had it for about four years. It's definitely seen better days. On the last trip I took it on, I had it in a plastic bin in the back of my truck and I forgot to bungee that bin down. The whole thing flew off onto the side of the road. And I will say that the bin is fine and this thing still pretty fine. Uh, the latch broke and this knob broke. So I might replace it, I might not, but it has a rigid, Hose uses the same pro kind of propane tank. I have no problem with a rigid hose. I don't see the problem with a rigid hose. Uh, I usually cook on a collapsible work table um, and it fits here. The propane bottle fits just fine here. The cutting board is, works here and everything fits fine. I don't know what having a movable option is gonna do for you. Yep, uh, this thing comes out. And you could clean it, which I haven't, but you can. It can simmer, kind of. Yeah, camp chef. Are my pumpkins. 
pots and pans. Uh, there's obviously more pots and pans than there are burners on my stove. However, I sometimes have used all four of these at the same time when I'm cooking for other people, which is generally what happens when I'm camping. These pots all serve a different function. This is really nice for being able to cook eggs and pancakes because it's nonstick. I got this at a grocery store when I was tired of stuff sticking to my pan over and over. And I think I probably paid like $9 for it. These other two pans are nice because they have metal handles, which means I can throw this in the fire while these two are on the stove. I lucked out and got this lid at a thrift store that happens to magically fit all three pans. It's very satisfying. And this is the pot that I cook with. This I bought on a used gear website your exchange, I think. The idea is that you can fit your pocket stove and smaller fuel canister inside of it, and the handle collapses to hold the lid on and keep it all together. This pot has really seen better days. It has this rubber handle that makes it so that you don't burn yourself when you're picking it up, but it has also um, melted on top of many fires. Yeah, despite it having been bent out of shape several times, it still does the job. I've probably had it for several years now and it continues to boil water to this day. These are my pots and pans. The Lodge 12 inch, I think, cast iron. I probably got it at REI, I don't really remember. This is a MSR pot set that used to come with a bag that I lost and it was the perfect size for these pots a nesting three pot set. The biggest one is three liters, the medium sized one is two liters, and the smallest one is one liter. I 98% of the time camp alone. Um, so this is definitely in some ways kind of excessive. I bought these fairly recently and I actually really like having a large, a large three liter pot. I am just cooking for myself, but <laughs> when you're cooking a lot of times you're like limited to things like a can of beans or a can of tomatoes. And I find if I were to make like a curry or a chili or something, can of chickpeas and a head of cauliflower are not gonna easily fit in a two liter pot. So you can also use them for storage. If you don't wanna like, you know, you made your chili in here and you have some leftover, you just want to put it in your cooler. You're not like strapped because you don't have anything else to cook in. I really like that they nest into each other, take up minimal space. This is the handle that uh, goes to all of them. I like this feature because I prefer not having to deal with the handles when you're packing it down, but you know, you can lose it momentarily. Frustrating, your eggs are burning, your chili's burning, you don't know where the fuck you put your handle and you don't know where anything is. But in general, I'm for the collapsible handle uh, just because it makes packing so much easier. Um, and I travel in a uncapped pickup truck, so everything has to go into a bin. You can use these as pans, the internet says. I've never done it. Doesn't seem like a great idea. <laughs> This cast iron pan really does everything that I would want a pan to do. I don't know what you would need another pan for. This is perfectly nonstick as long as you put enough bacon grease in it, which is great because then you just, before you cook everything, you have to cook a piece of bacon. You want to make a pancake? Cook a piece of bacon. And then you have a perfectly nonstick pan and your pancake tastes like bacon, which is better. So yes, those are all my pots and pans. I made this to keep all of my knives, forks, mixing tools, etc. organized. They're rather expensive for what they are if you try to buy one online or even in a knife store. So I made this out of an old pair of jeans and sewed together a few different slots specifically for what I was carrying and then attached some paracord to keep it all wrapped together. And I find that it keeps things tidy and easy to find in my setup. I am not into the one spork to rule them all sort of approach to camp cooking. 
I like to have options so that way one spoon can be doing one thing and another spoon can be doing another. So this is what I travel with. Wooden spoon with flat edge, good for scraping up, deglazing things on the bottom of a pan. Round spoon, rice spoon, also works as a spatula. Metal tongs, really clutch for grabbing something hot out of a fire. Fish spatula. Why this is called a fish spatula, I understand, but I find it a point of contention because it's really a very good multi-purpose spatula. You'll probably recognize this knife, spoon, fork. Aside from the knives, everything in here I found at thrift stores. I probably spent maybe $11 total gathering these things over the years. There's some linked in there. Um, knives. I have four different knives with me. This is a carbon steel open nail knife. It's a French knife that folds up nicely and fits in a pocket. This is good for using as a steak knife, but also just a general all-purpose pocket knife. I've got this Wusthof paring knife. A small knife is good for doing little detailed work. I've got this Kiwi brand chef's knife. This is probably a $7 tool. I really like these blades because they stay unusually sharp for a long time, considering that they're essentially a disposable item but it's nice to have a low stakes thing. So that way, if somebody's like, hey, can I help you cook? I can just hand them the cheap knife and I don't really have to worry about them messing it up. I also travel with this Santoku, which is a Japanese chef's knife. Um, I recently learned that Santoku stands for three virtues. What those three virtues are, I don't know, but the idea is that they can do many things. It's not just a singular knife in that way. This blade is probably the most luxury item of everything I carry. Definitely not essential to bring an expensive knife with you while you're camping. But again, I like to have the right tool for the job. I won't say what it costs, because it's extravagant. Uh, these are my utensils. This is a fantastic can opener that I bought at a bougie kitchen supply store in Manhattan called Whisk. It's super compact, very intuitive to use. Attractive, I think, it's a real looker. This is a Snow Peak Spork that I've had for a very long time. It's crossed the country with me a lot. This is a, I've never tried to say that word before, more, do you know how to say that word? More a knife? This is a Swedish stainless steel knife that was given to me by a friend before I went to bike cross country. He was trying to buy me a gun and I kept on telling him that that wasn't going to help anything and then he gave me this knife. Um, I've had it ever since. I, I stir with a spoon and I cut with his knife and I open cans with this can opener. Uh, I have a heavy gruel diet when I'm on the road. Lots of stew, lots of curry, lots of fried rice, and I, it's fine. This is all that I need. I could get some more stuff. Seems like I'd probably lose it. This is the stuff that I eat food off of. They're enamel. I had originally purchased these at a thrift store and they're, um, tea left in there. They are fairly old. They've got a few chips on them, but not in a place where it really matters. I later came across these at something like a Sierra Trading Post something something store where you can buy like discounted campware. They're made by GSI and they just happen to match. I like enamelware because you can drop it and it's not gonna break. Really good for that. I have one cup 
one plate because I am able to provide food for two people and if anybody else wants to eat with us they gotta bring their own shit. Um, because I don't want to carry a stack of plates around. This is my dishware. <laughs> you might recognize these from earlier in this video. Uh, I don't carry plates. I don't want to do those dishes. Um, if I cook something in this pan, I eat it out of this pan. If I cook something out of this pot, I eat it out of this pot. Dishes are a huge problem. And I don't, I don't see any advantage to putting something in a plate. <laughs> also, I'm almost always alone, so that changes things. It's just me eating gruel out of a pot. <laughs> Cannot recommend this Yeti mug here enough. Double wall insulated, good for the car because it's got this opening enclosure, which it's just on there with a magnet, so it's really easy to clean here. I didn't know that for like a year of owning this thing. I make coffee uh, in the morning straight into this with this collapsible pour over um, from Snow Peak. This thing is great. I've had this thing for a long time. I always prefer pour over coffee. Um, I know some people will travel with the AeroPress, which I think is just, it's, it seems extremely annoying to clean. Uh, the really nice thing that I think about pour over in general is that you can just basically pick up your coffee filter situation and throw it in the trash and you don't have to clean this at all, it's fine. Water bottle, just a clean canteen. There's absolutely nothing special about this clean canteen, which is why I like it. It holds water and I drink it out of it. Um, if I'm hiking, I will usually have a um, camelback in my bag, so that's where most of my water comes from when I'm camping, but if I just want water around the campsite or in my truck, that is the canteen. This is just a Yeti Rambler uh, that I have with this other lid on it that you can buy separately, which I think is a fantastic thing. I use this at home all the time too. This allows you to just pour with this thing still uh, on it. And this guy lives on here, so it's really good for getting all the gas station coffee that you need and keeping it warm. This is definitely a redundancy in this situation, but there's enough room for it. These are the vessels that I use for transporting liquid. I've narrowed it down to these three because they all serve a different function. Having a essentially disposable lightweight water bottle to carry around is really nice if you're going on a quick hike with your dog and you want to have something that doesn't weigh very much in addition to the water supply that you have for yourself. The squirt top bottle, you know, and it, it's good for sports doing the like Gatorade commercial thing, right? But it's also good to be able to, let's see if we can, yeah. It's good to be able to wash dishes with if you don't want to like have water running out of whatever your supply is and you just want to like squirt a little bit on there on the time. This hydro flask I got for hot water when I make tea in the morning. I'm not a coffee drinker. I chose this size because it fits in a cup holder, but honestly, I don't really like it that much. It's awkwardly tall. It doesn't fit into a lot of places. And I had originally thought it would be good for the old sleeping bag warmer trick where you put hot water in there, stick it at the bottom of your sleeping bag it heats it for you overnight, but it's actually too well insulated and it doesn't do that. Something like a clean canteen without insulation works much better for it. So uh, I could really do without this and narrow it down to just these two. This is an eco vessel, which I love. This is actually the third one that I've bought. Whenever I lose it, I replace it again because it works so well. It has a small opening with a plastic lining that makes it so you don't have that metallic taste when you're drinking, but it also has a wide mouth opening where you can put ice cubes or something through. And it comes with a strainer, so I can brew tea in here if I wanted to. It keeps the ice back also. And the insulation is incredible. It keeps things at temperature for like a day and a half. So I totally recommend it. I think that this is probably $30 from their website. Comes in a lot of different colors. You can also buy replacement caps for it if you lose something, which I've done before. Um, when things like fall off my bike or something. This I got for free when I bought a bike at my local bike shop.
That's it. These are the tins that I use for food storage in my car. I prefer this to plastic because plastic is gross, plastic melts, plastic is bad for the planet. There's so many reasons not to use it. This effectively keeps out bugs and rodents and whatever else you might need to be worried about and you can use it again and again. I got all this stuff at the thrift store. This I bought at a health food store for maybe $10 uh, several years ago and it was super worth it. It's uh, a really useful lunch box with a lid, a top layer, and a bottom layer. Fits a whole sandwich or whatever else you might want to pack when you're going on a day-long hike and leaving the comforts of your car where all your food is there with you. These food tins are nice because they're uh, nesting, so when I'm not using one, I can reduce the amount of space that they take up. Like so. Voila. I travel in an uncovered pickup truck, which isn't a thing that I would recommend, but it is what I do. <laughs> I have four of these. They're Rubbermaid. I really like to buy things that match my truck, which is like a safari tan. <laughs> so I actually had a really hard time finding like brown tan scale bins, but the other three I use to store other things, but I have one of them that has all of the food stuff that I don't want to get wet. I'll keep my pots and pans, I'll keep my stove and like any food that's not sealed from the elements. I will try to buy food that comes in plastic bags that are resealable. Anything else I will convert into a Ziploc bag. I really like these Nalgene bottles. I'll usually put olive oil or vinegar in a couple of these guys. I also store my soap in one of them. They just, they don't spill. As long as you seal, seal them well, um, I've never had one spill on me. I usually carry two milk crates which are stacked on top of each other with a milk crate can and the milk crates I will store beans and peanut butter and tuna fish and anything else that is impervious to the elements. I also will travel with usually a couple of wide mouth ball jars, two sizes. These are good things. Uh, I've never had one break on me. They're seal really well. I can shove them in the cooler with leftover gruel. Yeah, I'll usually have four or five of these um, and they'll get rotated and used for different things. I bought these Rubbermaid tubs in a set of four and they were more expensive than they should have been. And I paid for them because they were brown. Uh, I think they were $80 for all four tubs. But like I said before, this thing flew off the back of my truck while I was driving. Not broken. Scratched, not cracked. So I'm gonna say, good investment. This is a Reliance brand seven gallon water jug. Uh, for those of you in Canada, it's 26.5 liters. I chose this jug out of all of my options because it had the smallest footprint. It's really pretty narrow. I personally don't like to carry seven gallons of water back and forth in and out of the store or wherever I'm getting it to refill. I don't fill it up all the way, but it's good to know that I can if I know that I'm gonna be going for a long drive without being able to refill water, especially considering I'm watering myself and my dog it's pretty important to have extra for that reason. There is a pressure release pin on this side. My one complaint about this is that it means you can't orient the jug in a certain way without it potentially spilling when you're storing it. And then it has a spigot water release here. That makes it pretty easy to get everything out. This cap wasn't waterproof. Um, the way that it came, but I put some plumber's tape around the threading and now I don't have any problems with leaking. It's pretty straightforward, you know? It holds water. Oh, 
I got this jug used from a friend. I think I probably gave her like 25 bucks for it. I don't know what it costs now. These are my water jugs. I bought them recently and I have a lot of mixed feelings about them. I will go up to three weeks without refueling and 10 gallons is cutting it a little close for that. Generally, if I'm going that long without any access to any water, I will start using like cooler water for dishes and cooking, which is a good thing to think about actually in general. The valve to keep your water flowing properly is on this cap. So it kind of always leaks a little bit when you're pouring. One thing that I really like about it is that the mouth is really large. So you can actually get your hand in there and clean, which always mystifies me about the other ones. Like, is there black mold growing inside of all of your water vessels? I don't know. How can you possibly dry them? I don't know. Anyways, you can actually wash this thing. This is great. Also, this is the most Robusto plastic jug I have found. The plastic appears to be about twice as thick as it is on any of the other ones, which is basically why I bought them. They're five gallons each, which is a little bit more comfortable than carrying a seven gallon container. You know, still it's not like fun, but it's fine, it's totally doable. The other thing that I kind of don't like about it is I feel like there's not a good lip because it doesn't have a pour spout. When you're pouring it, it means you're pouring it like this, and there's not a great lip down here. I don't know. The United States government didn't do a fantastic job designing these. These were weirdly expensive. They were $40 each, and I got them on Amazon, and I've seen them more expensive other places. I did like, uh, you know, some comparison shopping, and we found them as cheap as possible. But they're super, super sturdy. Like, I don't, I don't know how to describe to you how robusto these water, these water jugs are, but it's like hard to make a move. Anyways, they match my truck. <laughs> An often neglected part of a camp kitchen setup is how you do dishes and how you clean everything up. This is everything I use for that purpose. This is a handmade broom given to me by a friend. Um, it's nice to just have a compact way to get crumbs and such out of small places. Towel for drying dishes. I use this pot to wash dishes in. I got this at an estate sale for I think like $5 and it fits almost perfectly in my custom storage drawers in the back of the Forerunner. It comes with a handle, doubles as a way to transport you know, random objects from place to place. I do all of my dish scrubbing with this OXO brand scrubby. This has been a real game changer for camp dishwashing for me. Number one, you don't have to hold some like dirty, cold, whatever sponge. Number two, it holds all of the soap within the thing. And you can just do that to get everything onto the pot and then drop it into the rinse. And um, yeah, it makes everything pretty easy. Don't use your drinking water to do your dishes. Use the river when you can. <laughs> use natural soaps if you're washing your dishes in the river. You shouldn't put biodegradable soap in the river. Why not? It's like biodegradable on land, but it's still bad for water streams. Don't put soap in the river. <laughs> <sighs> there was a time in my life when I traveled with a sponge. And at some point I was camping with a friend and they did their dishes with some dried grass. And <laughs> I've never looked back. I travel in a way where I don't have a lot of water to spare. So the idea of having a pot that I'm filling with water to do this is like outrageous to me. Absolutely not happening. This is so much more effective than you would think it is. I rarely use soap. If something's really gross, I'll put some soap in, but usually I'll just take a little bit of cooking water or cooler water. I'll transport it in one of those ball jars, put a tiny amount in the pan, and scrub the shit out of it with some grass. This is so much more sanitary than a sponge because you just throw it back where it came from when you're done with it. And it's like very clean. 
very effective abrasive. And then you get all that muck and then you, you know, toss the dirty water out of the bowl and then wipe what's left with a single paper towel. And that thing's clean as a whistle. <laughs> and this is all you need. And every day you get a fresh sponge. Great. <laughs>Folks, there you have it. <laughs> Almost more information than anyone hoped for. If any of you have experience with the gear reviewed here today, let us know in the comments below. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you have a better recommendation? Oh, and one critical item you'll notice that did not make the cut in this segment is a cooler. I decided to save this very controversial topic for my next video, wherein I'll be giving you my transparent take on roto-molded coolers why Yetis are a scam, and what coolers out there will give you the most bang for your buck should you wish to buy one. All that and more coming up in part three of the Snail Runner series. And if you don't want to miss the next video, you know what to do. Thanks for watching.